everyone. Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I'm so excited to have on a 38 and 41 year olds from Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, and the old honey hole, Cardiff, Wales. Their hockey journeys have taken them to the USA, Wales, Croatia, Germany, England, Austria, and Team China. They are running a muck of the equipment managing world and in the shed world too. And they return with thousands of listens and have become global sensations. From the Cincinnati <laughs> Mighty Ducks to the New Mexico Scorpions to the Louisiana Ice Skaters to Mad Vizcac Zagreb to the old Honey Hole Card Devils to Manchester Storm before they were the Chocolatey Manchester Storm and Team Croatia, Team China, and everything in between. These two are now staples and legends with the Gratz 99ers and the Straubing Tigers and the Shed. Welcome to the back deck, Maxi and Deese. Hello, Wally. Nice to see you fellas again. Um, I get into how we know each other. It was a couple weeks ago. Maxi reached out and said, got to be about time for our annual uh, shed trip, right? Yes, sir. It is. You know, just last year, right before Champions League started, uh, I think we had this kid together. And I was sitting yeah, there at the uh, beer festival at the Folks Fest. And Shaobing sending you pictures from the beer tents. Yes, that was fun. I think, I think it's time we have a chat again. I couldn't agree more. Um, and I'm starting to realize that I've really created a monster here because I bet you I locked down seven people in the last 12 hours. But I had, I, had, I, I send out too many hooks and then I started yeah. hooking people and I got no time to fish, you know? <laughs> Uh, and Deese, I didn't know we know each other. You were supposed to come to Canada this summer and you never came. Disappointed no. the children. They were a mess. Uncle Deese didn't come. No, it's some uh it's some bad family shit I had to get on with and then that family stuff got resolved last week. Uh so anyway, yeah, so that went sideways fast. Right. And um I did get to see you at Josh Batch's testimonial, right? You got to see me. I didn't get to see a lot of people because I was blackout. <laughs> yeah, you got to you gotta contain yourself, you know? You, I know we both like to push the envelope, but you got to know where, where the ceiling is, right? <laughs> I went through the ceiling. I was in another galaxy for a little while there. And you actually played hockey. We both played hockey. You still suck. I, that's because I was wandering around the whole rink with no skate guards on. <laughs> and oh, then I tried man. to skate. <laughs> Yeah, Maxi, he was being real decent that night. <laughs> hey, man, it's equipment managers are always too lazy to take care of their own skates, so it just yeah, gets worse. And worse really, than that. really. Yeah. Um, so didn't you skate no out water. with beers in your hands and go straight to the penalty box or something? Yeah, I had two two in my hands, straight out the gate, straight to the penalty box, sat down, popped them, gunned them. Here we so, go. so speaking of this, um, that night. For my under nine gals team I'm coaching at the end of it all, or that I was coaching, um, the Shed family threw a bunch of chocolate on the ice and Shed guy Jake from Manchester is there making it rain. And it was so cool to bring back chocolate for all my girls and like talk about what a memory that they come on my podcast. I tell them that I'm going over to a game and I'm going to bring back chocolate and it actually happens. What a Shed family, you know? <laughs> So oh, I hear yeah. I hear they're frisking people on the way into the arena now. <laughs> really? Internal body cavity searches for a Mars bar? Well, I don't know what the rules are there. If they're allowed, like, I don't, I don't, I think they're taking away food and drinks from outside. I understand it became a bit of a problem with the flasks and whatnot people are bringing in. But uh, if they're t putting their hands on our chocolate, oh boy, game on, right? Well, they got to make money out of the concession stands. You understand that, but there's got to be a clause in there that says, "Hey, Mars bars, chocolate maybe bars." Maybe we need like is. a code. Maybe when the security guard frisks them and they feel something, just say "shed family," right? And then the security guards know what's up, right? Get your hands off of us. <laughs> uh, but I actually really enjoyed what I saw in Herning, Denmark. Um, they obviously support fun and are having a time, they have a cardboard cutout of Matt Carruth in the lobby now with 
a Twix stand to buy chocolate bars to make it rain. That is fucking hockey at its finest. Smart. Right? Smart. Make make a few dying too. Right. And maybe if these teams really get the ball rolling, perhaps they could throw the shed like a percentage, right, of all the chocolate sold. You know, I'm just thinking out loud. <clears throat> Manchester, Cardiff, <clears throat> earning, right? Hey, have the youth you... hockey team sell chocolate, raise some money. Hey, there you yeah. go. People helping people, right? Yeah, figure it and out. Then what, while you can buy a Wi Fi booster. Yeah, so I don't know why we're going to be frisking people. Why don't we just sell it? You know, I'd, yeah. I'd, I would say we don't want, we, need, we don't need to be making a lot of money off the Shed family here. We're just trying to have fun, right? Make it rain. Yeah. Uh, but there yeah. you go, Toddy. I found another way to make you money, right? <laughs> uh, but seriously. Found you'll find a way to spend it. He just had a kid, <laughs> eh? Ah, crazy. That hey, is crazy. Lee. Um, it's amazing seeing all these people grow up from your device and you don't actually get to see people in person, you know, weird, but Max, you got her dark over there. Are you in the, the barn? No. Oh yeah. I'm down at the barn. I'm in one of the equipment rooms. So I'm kind of backlit and frontlit kind of funny. So it's, so backlit like, it's and frontlit. That yeah, is like, what, well, that's, what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what happened to Dees at the testimonial. He was front right? lit and back lit. There yeah. was no so in between. No light, he was right lit. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm just kind of sitting in the like dark space in between there. Dees, did you even make it out on the town that night? Did you not even? <laughs> yeah. Be- yeah. You did? Yeah. It took me about an hour to get out the dressing room after the game. And Murds had to help me undo my skates because I was <laughs> too fat. out of it. No, I just, he just buckled. And then I have uh, a hard time tying my skates. Just <laughs> so say like Mario okay and you getting a skate taken off for him. Yeah. <laughs> so I then, was then I wobbled enough. up to the bar and I oof. I remember we went. I sobered up actually after the game because I realized I was in a cave, so I had to mix in a few waters. But then I went back into the cave because I got home at something like six thirty in the morning. Yeah, it, it was. It all went sideways. It was. Um, it was an exhausting weekend, really. When you look back on it, it was epic, though. You know, tiring stuff. Tiring stuff. Is there, an, is there another one this summer? Is anything going on this summer? I heard Ben Davies is having one, but I never played with him, so I haven't even got him into my shed yet, which we should promote that and get that guy in the shed. We've talked about it numerous times, and um, I just don't have, I don't think I've contacted him yet, but he's having one. But I never played Pushing. with him, so, you know? Hell of a guy, Benny. He is a great guy. dude, yeah, and a great player. Yeah, he's had a million different hairstyles, and I, but I think he's run out of hair to have hairstyles with now. <laughs> Maxi, what's new with you? You're going right through beer tent season right now, eh? Oh, yeah, uh, that's the well, time. We had our, yeah, we had our festival here in August, Oktoberfest, I believe was going on. I don't have much interest in going over to Oktoberfest. I like my one here. I in agree. Stratton, where it's yeah. all local Germans and stuff, not so many tourists. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we moved to a new apartment here in Shelby. We moved from just outside to like right in the main downtown street. So it's like a mm-hmm. five minute walk from the rink. It was like a five minute walk into the festival. So it was a nice yeah, Th- yeah, it those festivals good. are as fun as it gets. And I know what you mean by liking the, uh, the Straubing one more than Oktoberfest. Yep. The Oktoberfest one is so big and there's so many people and there's so many, like you said, tourists, like people that are tourists, not yeah. in their later hose and mucking it up and pissing themselves and smashing pints, right? Or they're in like cheap Amazon leader hose in or they look like a tourist. Like, Yeah. 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 And those local ones are like the beer tents play the same music and the bands are just as good. And yeah. so is the food, right? <laughs> I mean, it's it's all the same stands. The, uh, the there's a huge Ferris wheel that comes here. They set up every year for it, and it's known as the Oktoberfest Ferris wheel. So all the rides, all the stands, all the tents, all that stuff just moves from place to place to place. Well, fun fact for everybody: we have a Ripley Fall Fair around here. <laughs> we have even like a Ferris wheel too, and we yeah. have beer gardens for the adults too. So we're gonna muck it up too, but we just don't have the music and the atmosphere, you know. Well, it's Cincinnati is the biggest Oktoberfest in the States. And I remember going to that as a kid. And I, so I thought I knew like what Oktoberfest was. And then the first time I worked in Zagreb, we came here for the preseason tournament. It was my first time in Germany. It was here in Straubing. Came to that festival. I'm like, I don't know a thing about beer festivals. <laughs> um, Beer festivals are my, like, if I ever felt like myself, it was at those. I could really shine at those events, you know? Moss. 
big beer, half a chicken, some potato salad, maybe a big pretzel. Yeah, and that's called living, right? Yeah, yeah, it's and, and the timing of it all is it's always at the start of the hockey season when all these guys from all over the world come to this town and say, okay, we're a team. And then they're yeah. like, okay, hey, the beer tent's over there and so is the food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah like, uh, team Why don't you guys yeah, like, become a team this month, right? <laughs> Run yeah. amok. <laughs> yeah, like, it was fun. I went down on opening night because I don't go out a ton with the boys during it all during the season, but during the festival, I make sure I get out a couple. And so I went down the opening night with them and had a couple of good ones, but didn't stay too late. Uh, but then on the, the third night of the festival, like uh, my son's finally getting the age where he's calm around babysitter. So the wife, so we went to the festival. We started with all the coaches and wives and, you know, staff and wives and moved over to like the player party. And it's kind of the one time a year where it becomes more like a full team party. Right. You know, and I, I believe you know, um, in the business, they call that a hockey family. And yes. um, yeah. it sounds it's like, like you guys have year, that going coach, on there. Yeah. Like it's one time a year. You might see the coach and his wife might be at the same bar after they might be at the same beer tent. Everybody's just having a good time. And uh, you know, you're getting to know everybody. Like you said, getting to know all the new guys. We have a lot of new guys this year. So like, give it, you know, getting them out with the guys that have been here before. It's very important timing. It is very important. And it's important to let your hair down all together. Yeah. Right. And, and we, we lean into it, man. Like the, 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 the day the festival starts, the practice the next day is later in the afternoon because they know we're going. Because it's time to muck Sunday, it up. <laughs> we have a Sunday exhibition game at 2 o'clock on the first Sunday of it. Okay, everybody's going that night. Monday, we'll yeah. have an afternoon. You know, like they make sure. Then the next weekend, we have our tournament where we have three other teams that come in. So, like, Lugano comes in and Nuremberg comes over and Ingolstadt comes over. And everybody should get to experience that because yeah. beer, beer tents in Germany in September – are as living as it gets. <laughs> Lederhosen is actually really comfortable. I got an awesome pair of the shorts this year, finally. Oh, you, you're wearing the shorts, you, eh? Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Well, they, how much do they cost you? Those things aren't cheap. Uh, no, uh, they're not. I might not think we're 140, which is pretty relatively cheap. That's a, that's uh, a good deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I got, like, I got my little guy a pair, so he's got, like, the full shirt, suspenders. And sick. That is sick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's pretty yeah. neat you're raising a little German over there, probably rip walking around eating a pretzel in his later hosen. <laughs> yeah, he loves exactly pretzels and croissants. Uh, yeah, I, I bet you, I bet you he knows his way around to play to Spetsley, too. <laughs> oh my god, does he ever? <laughs> yeah, I do. Too. Little little Spetzel. Spetzel. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it brings back a lot of memories time of that because the Fetter Market in Beatingheim, holy moly, could I do it there? Um, yep. a- every year I would show all the new guys what it was all about and how this is this is how we're gonna roll here at the Fetter Market. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, got yeah. a bit carried away, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to show these new guys Christmas market time. Yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah. my other time to shine. It's 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 yeah. great timing because the start of the season you get that get together. At the beer tents, you get to know each other, become a team, and then you get into the grind, and then you need a bit of a shot of life, and that comes in December with the Christmas markets, and you all get out yeah. together and start having some blue vines and crushing food again, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, some good vines and blue vine. You, you don't like, like blue that, vine, Dees? No, it's too sweet for me. Yeah, oh yeah, too sweet for you, eh? You are oh. soft as baby shit. Oh, it's the one here has all sorts of, like warm whiskey cocktails, and they're unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's more but my I, gig. Well, see, I I, I'm not tough enough one. for whiskey. That, I oh, I wet the bed if I did that. <laughs> yeah, man up, oh. Wally. No, <laughs> you wouldn't like you wouldn't like my office then, Wally. Wait yeah. there, let me unplug you from the power. Are you well, are you uh, behaving yourself, D. Congrats. Are you going to show me your stock of whiskey and your at uh, your, uh, your place I, of we're work? We're running. We're running low. It's behind the door. It's behind the door. But we're, I'm running low on my. Uh, <laughs> my my mini bar. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> yeah, I got a bottle of jacket, man. gentleman Jack, in mine right now. It's always <laughs> interesting where you work and how life is. What you guys get to do, like you guys being equipment managers, do get to enjoy life. And you're in hockey. You get a team every year, and you can pretty well drink on the job. <laughs> I wouldn't say drink on the job. Right, on well, the job. right, but yeah, at, at the know. place yeah. of work, right? When but it's yes, over. Yes, yes, Enjoy, enjoying beer after after a yeah. game, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Right, yes, right. Or the, the, I mean, the thing in Europe, too, and not back home, but like a schnapps before the game. Do you ever do yeah. that? Um, you ever see the Germans do oh, yeah. that? Oh, they, yeah. Before a game, yeah. they do it? 
Oh yeah, yeah, they have that That's... Alpa, it's like uh, Greek stuff, and it's well, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You go to the like restaurant, and you do it before and after the meal, don't you? No, no, I mean like these guys do it before the game, like after right before, before the game. The game. And what's the point of that? That's like wake you it's up. Like a, like a little... Yeah, like a little shot. Not for the players, for the equipment guys. Oh, it's just for the equipment guys, not the players. Oh, no, no. These German players, they do it too. Yeah. Oh, 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 really? Oh, I haven't seen that. Hold on a second. I haven't seen the players doing it. Did he just leave? Oh, he's gone. Yeah, right here. I'm in the ring. Hold on. Yeah, he said he. Oh, you're getting the schnapps out. He's going to get his uh, whatever this is. There's a camera. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. I've had that stuff before. That's like if you go to a Greek restaurant and you do that shot yeah. afterwards to help digest. That one. This one's from Czech. And yeah, you get it like yeah, ice yeah, cold. Yeah. Like, listen, I like digestions. Like, yeah. Some guys like get ice cold, squirt it on their legs. Some guys get ice cold, take a shot before, like, as they're like right before the game starts. Um, I probably could have used one of those yesterday. So I, uh, to bring up, opens my own. up the veins. To bring up yeah, my like, it really does open, open, everything. I, I I've been doing it for a while. Or those uh, the creations they drink rocky before a game. It's like moonshine. You drink like ice cold oh, shot of moonshine. Gosh, now you bring back a different that, memory. Yeah, they do that in they do that in Slovakia too. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, I I played the with a Croatian German goalie in uh, Beatingheim, Silo Martinovic. Martinovic, and, yeah. And um, I remember we had a we had a cabina fest where everybody ended up back at his apartment. And he brought out the the moonshine, and oh, that was a tough practice yep. the next morning. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah shit goes rocky. sideways when that comes out. Oof. It, oh, they, it was tough. They use that for every. They use that for everything. Like I get sick now, and uh, I just take a shot at Sarakia, and like it'll force like how, me. Like, and I heard of the there were some Russian fellows I played with that would do. I think it was three shots of vodka with pepper in it, and then go to bed wrapped in a blanket like tight and then that's that it yeah sweat in a ba- out. that's a banya they call that a banya banya yeah or like See, the, i'd the rather get my sauna and just sit there but hey <laughs> onion onion in the sock put an onion in your sock go to sleep like cut open an onion put it open up against yeah. your sock yeah. put put in your sock take a shot of rocky or two and get yourself to sweat for yeah. the night you wake up the next morning yeah. like a million it sucks bucks. the shit out you the, yeah. uh, an onion yeah 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 I never they know said, what the hell you we're going to talk about. You're telling me you on your to... neck and everything. And that sucks the stuff out into the onion? Yeah. Like, yeah. allegedly, Supposedly. the onion pulls, like, the toxins out of your system. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I've, I've had it with a fever that day. And I took, I did that. I did a couple shots of Rocky. I went to sleep. I woke up. I mean, I sweated, like, through everything through the night. Changed my hoodie three times. Woke up yeah, the next day. Like, nothing was wrong with me. Hmm. Um. Well, that sounds more natural than taking pills that are made in a factory, right? <laughs> yeah, but like, it's all creation wise tale, so it's wild. But yeah, like yeah, done all that stuff. So that's what you use the whiskey or the moonshine for. Um, well, I could have used. I bring up my own shit now. I could have used a shot of moonshine yesterday. Um, yeah. we're building this team or picking this team and doing tryouts for under thirteen rep here, and um. We, I, do, I don't know how good the competition is. I didn't know how good our team was. I thought we had a squad. I thought we had a roster. We went to an exhibition game yesterday and got absolutely smashed seven to one. Yeah. Like smashed. And um, the other team said they had five more cuts to make. <laughs> uh, so we got, we got some work to do, but holy moly, watching this game, man, these kids are a blank canvas. They, 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 they don't know where to be and where to go. And it's like, there's a lot of coaching to do here, but, my story is after the game, we decided who we were releasing and he's a shed guy. He's my boy. <laughs> and um, episode 115, Evan, we had Buenos for the boys. One of the best teammates out there. Um, and we decided what we had to do. And I knew what we had to do. So I'm like, uh, I'm going to go to their house. So I went to his house and holy moly, that stuff sucks. <laughs> Uh, Jesus, I, at that age too. So yeah, can't uh, think about that. so like he comes out and his mom sees me coming up and opens the door and he hears Evan and he comes out and I was like, "Hey, buddy," and he's like, "I I didn't make it." I'm like, "No, buddy, you didn't." <laughs> and then he's like, "I could see it coming," and I was like, "Oh," and then uh, anyways, I walked out of there and uh, the mom yells to like say thank you for coming and stopping by. And 
huh, I was a grown, almost 40 year old, and I was crying. And I drove home with tears, like going down my face, and I didn't even wipe them away. I was just like, I'm going to feel this whole thing because I don't ever want this to change. I want to care this much when I have to do this stuff because there's too many coaches out there that don't give a shit, you know? I would absolutely agree with that. So, yeah, Yeah. I was thinking about it and how much I cared about that kid. And I was like, this better never change. I better, you know, no matter how much I coach, this was quite the day. It was a tough one. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but he was all good, and the mom thanked me later and said it was classy to stop by there. But I, I didn't know it was the only way I could see doing it. I couldn't just write it, or I couldn't just call. I had to see him, and oh, tough day at the office, <laughs> especially when it's a volunteer position. You know, oh, Jesus, that's so much pressure on a volunteer. Ah, <laughs> oh, because then you start caring about them, you know, and then all of a sudden it's. You have to do, you have to pick the team. And uh, anywho. It sounds like he's a great kid, like maturity wise or self-awareness wise. Yeah. And um, well, he's just a great yeah, guy. Yeah, that's um, true. At least he knew. Well, and I think the kids know, right? And they know when they play good or not and wh- where they stack up to the others. Um, But yeah. Um, Anywho, I got one more cut to make and it's going to be another heartbreaker. <laughs> God. <laughs> So that's going to be fun, right? Yeesh. But then I have a team after that, and then I can start working at fixing the seven one stuff, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. You'll get that one. Focus on the business. So, do you guys know Glasgow's equipment manager? He's a uh, upcoming shut guy here. Big red. Big red. Yeah. What a beauty. Uh, so he he sent me a, a shed guy selfie of him mucking it up at Chippy Lane. And said he was coming uh, yeah, to the shed. And he uh, sent it to me too. <laughs> I tell you, shed guys know shed guys because then Dickel writes, Big Red, what a beauty. And he <laughs> is a big red ginger, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's an absolute beauty. Though. Love that guy. Oh. Love him. Um, yeah, he's just getting into this kit game, eh? And he was telling me how much Murdy was helping him out in Cardiff and how Deese is just a disaster. And I said, I agree completely. <laughs> <laughs> And okay. he messaged me saying, Murds has told me some stories. I was like, yeah, I don't believe Murds. He's a liar. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure if you go to Cardiff, you'll probably hear some these stories. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so I get, we better get it, keep going here, eh? It's just lunch hour. Deese, last time we spoke, I believe you were just about to be the equipment manager for Team China. How'd that, that go? That was uh, interesting, Wally. I'd uh, imagine. <laughs> Real, real interesting. Um, like very skilled, great guys. Um, a lot of North Americans, eh? Yeah, the team was probably two thirds North Americans of what they called, in their own words, North American Chinese, and then they had Chinese Chinese. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to put it so I don't get like assassinated or something, but it was super unorganized. Um, well, let, how about you answer this question first? Is it something you want to do again? No. Fair enough. So I feel like you can speak freely now. <laughs> yeah, I can speak freely, Wally, but like right. <laughs> everywhere, right. you know? <laughs> They're listening, Wally. They're yeah. listening. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> Like, um, you, just, you just don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you guys didn't win gold. <laughs> no, we won. Uh, we won bronze. Uh, I'm still waiting for a medal. That sums it up. Uh, we promised it's in the mail. It's in the mail. It's in the mail. Well, it'd be but, neat to uh, have a bronze medal from the world championships. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, there was. There should have been enough, but. Uh, uh, but you, you didn't uh, have the skate say. sharp enough, so you didn't. No. Get one? The, the dignitaries decided that uh, they were more important than the team. Um, very the pl- political. Very political. The players got theirs. The players got theirs. I think all the players got theirs. A bunch of staff didn't get theirs. Head coach didn't get one. <laughs> Was told, yeah, you'll get it in the mail. 
but uh but all the political people that came from whatever party paid for everything they got a medal right um (laughs) move on move on i'm gonna get assassinated fair enough (laughs) um Cat, yeah, no, but like it's weird when you play hockey all over the world, right? And you guys know about this is every place has a different hockey culture, right? Absolutely, it was was wild, it was wild. But I I worked with some great guys, you know, I Brandon Yip, um, Jake Chelios, Chris Chelios, his kid, uh, Ryan Sproul. So there was was a lot of lot of really good guys on there, and I still I still speak to a couple of them, and uh, so yeah. Yeah, it was good, but it was tough. It, it was just frustrating more than anything that I went to a lot of effort organizing things and uh, planning, and then you get there, um, day one, you don't have practice jersey, you don't have practice socks, you don't have tape, you don't have laces, uh, you don't have a sharp and a rivet and nothing. And you're like, where is all the stuff that you told me you were getting me? And they said, you bring it. I was like, what? No, no, no. I'm not a traveling circus. I said, that's why I sent you an email. And you replied telling me, yeah, we're getting you a Blade Master. We're getting you a Riveter. We're getting you this, this, this. Uh, I was like, so you thought I was bringing? No. I was like, so you thought you were? I was bringing practice jerseys and socks? I'm confused. Mm. Like That is confusing. So we, um, the day we got there, we had to go. We reported for camp in Riga, Latvia. Turned up at like midday to go set the room up. Um, and we just, no jerseys, no socks, no tape, no laces, no nothing. So we... No I hockey said, oh, stuff to do the hockey. No, no. I was <laughs> like, oh, this is, this is interesting. So I said to this, uh, this guy who was the team manager slash social media guy, I think, um okay, we gotta go to the hockey store and, and buy stuff. And he's like, Yeah, 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 okay. Uh you I'll stay. He said he would go and I had to stay at the rink. And I was like, No. I need to come and buy the stuff with you. And he's like, No, no, I'll I'll fix it. And we had an argument for like fifteen minutes, but he wouldn't let me come to the hockey store. Two hours later he comes back with twenty five grey practice jerseys. 25 black woolly socks that you used to wear in junior that we all sweat like <laughs> crazy in. They, they look like Maxie's beard. <laughs> and I was like, did you talk to anyone about this order or did you read the list that I wrote you? And he's like, no. Okay, so how was on practice? Web gray. So that was uh, oh, and he, he turned up with some pink stick tape, camouflage <laughs> stick tape, and some pink laces. Like, what what you get this for? He said they didn't have enough of what you wrote on the list, so I got you the same sizes you asked for, but different colors. So <laughs> that would look good in the world championships, eh? Oh, I love it. It was, it was <laughs> that's uh, hockey, eh? It was fruity to say the the least. <laughs> um, so I guess. I, I understand that when things aren't going right or smoothly um, and, you know, we're hockey guys and we like to win and do well at what we're doing. That'd be quite frustrating, wouldn't it? It's, it was very frustrating. And mm. they turned up with um, what's called an SSM sharpener. I'm sure Maxi knows what one of those is. <laughs> yeah, we, it's we, you sent me the picture of it when you were there. I was dying yeah, laughing. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you asked, yeah, that was it. You messaged it. How is it? And I sent you, well, this arrived. And the, <laughs> the guys that don't know what it is, it's oh, this I mean, tiny like turret with a uh, with a stone that you sharpen skates, but the the blade attaches to this this arm thing. And it's like it's just it's from nineteen seventy. <laughs> it's like oh, uh, same, I ain't using it's it. The same sharpener they use in Mighty Ducks too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Wear thick socks, Gordon. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, yeah. That must have been an interesting experience, though, right? It it was like I gotta be honest though. They they treated me really well. Uh, they, I, we got great hotels, great travel, everything, other than the hockey. The stuff I needed for work was fantastic, but um, 
Right. The, the way they treated me and, and I traveled, everything was great. So the hotels okay. were great. And I got paid. So yeah, there, was no, there was no chase in money. So that's a big thing. Just your medal, right? Yeah. Wow. I'll, well, I'll probably get it out of a box of corn flakes. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Max, are you guys in the Champions League this year? Because we said we talked last year. No, uh, we are not in Champions League this year. It was top three because they reformatted oh. it. They eliminated yeah, some yeah. teams. So Germany went down to three and we finished fourth last year. Oh, really? So you lost out just because they changed the rules of who's in? Yeah, they changed the format. They don't do like the group play anymore. Now you just have three home Pretty games weird. and three road games and then most points advances like a bracket system. Oh, the group stage. And then they get into head to head, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they got rid of like group stage and you just play three home and three away out of like drawn out of the pot. Yeah. It's a, then they go on the not day. like, not like you go to Salzburg and then Salzburg comes to you. You know, exactly. Play, you just have three you home and play three away. Six different teams basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, Maxi, last time I saw you, would it have been last time we chatted was with Lamps? With Lamps in the springtime, yeah. That's a great time. <laughs> and uh him he's supposed to be coming on with Uncle Jerry, Jerry Coon. That's you right know? We had it planned, all locked down, and then uh, something came up with parenting. And yeah. uh I like it got up at like five in the morning because I'm a psychopath oh. to talk, and then I saw the message that they couldn't do it, and I was like, Okay, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's the life of four kids. Yeah. No kidding. Life's busy. Yeah. Love yeah. Oh, yeah. He's busy, man. Like he's got this nice electric bike with like the seats for four in it. And it's including like the strapped in baby seat. It's awesome. And man, like you just see <laughs> he him does all awesome over town. stuff. That guy, that guy yeah. does yeah, awesome he's, stuff. He's just all over town on it, running the kids here, running the kids there. And uh, they're opening the bakery and kind of got some of the bakery going already. So delivering cakes to this coffee shop and this place and, like he, and he just cruising he's, around on the big uh, bike. He, you can tell he he gets everything out of every day. Yeah, yeah, he lives the he lives the life, man. He he lives hard in a right. good way. And they, a good way. I, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, where and what are you doing now? I always ask that. You know, Maxi, you yeah. start. Uh, you're well, you're currently, in the barn, like, actually, I right guess. here in the barn. I'm in. I'm in like one of the equipment rooms. I'm in like the equipment like. Office, the snake trapping rooms across the hall behind me there. Uh, so I'm just kind of just chilling in the office. Uh, uh, right here in Straubing, doing the usual stuff. Season started. We've got one win, one loss, one overtime loss. We have a whole bunch of new imports this year, so we're really getting to know each other. We actually kind of struggled a little bit in the preseason, but the team has started to click over and click a little bit here. So and you guys so finished fourth in the DL. Yeah, and they got all a bunch things. of new imports. Like, where did yes, they go? Uh, yeah, reloaded on imports. Like, uh, one had one had already signed over in Ingolstadt in like November the year before because it's you how can. life works over here. That I was at St. Dennis, and then everybody else, like you know, you know how it is. Just bosses think it's time to make some moves, so we made some moves, and uh, yeah. it's looking like it's going to play out pretty well for us. Like I said, like we're still getting to know each other a little bit, but. We're a highly competitive team for sure. Well, that, it's good to be competitive in that league because yeah. there can be the bottom of the barrel. And Straubing has come a long way from back when I was over there. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is my fifth season here. We've been in playoffs every year since I've been here. And they got in the year before got here. So it's like five straight years for them. And they, they'd only been in one time like before that ever. So, By the way, speaking of Germany, I got to bring up my exciting news that I post about I'm in the ice hockey news this week. An article about me. Oh, shit. That's yeah. based right here in Chauvin. They're oh, off yeah. the office. I know. I talked to yeah. Tim Hess, the guy that writes for them. He was the okay. one that brought it up that um, he was going to do an article. And I said, well, why don't we make it into a podcast as well? And you can interview me on the pod. And that was like episode 319. He did that. We chatted on the pod. I sent it. And then he turned that right into a newspaper article and he sent it to me that it is out there. And he was working and strobbing. Isn't it a small world? Yeah. I mean, hockey is the tiniest world, man. It just. Super small world. It's, it's getting good. smaller, too, the more I talk yeah. to people. Absolutely. Yeah. Weird stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, Dees, you're in your office, too. Eh? I see all the steel behind you. 
Yeah, pain in my ass. Bauer had uh, new new tucks and new steels out this year, so I've got to show you here. So that's all my new steel. That's all my new holders. They're all my old ones that sit above my head. Because I'm sure Maxi's the same. Half the team are on new, half new the team are on old. There's and new the and new old steel. steel. The new steel fits the new holder or the old holder, but the old steel doesn't fit the new holder. Is that Unless, right? Unless, Unless you do a little work, eh, Maxi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which D's showed, like, this is the equipment world. Like, D's figured out a way to, D's had somebody else show him a way to turn the old steel. Oh, into I figured out on my own. Then D's, okay, D's figured out himself, then made a video and sends me the video and start making steel on my own, start taking the old steel, making it the new steel. And that's also how we know each other is the other chat we had was the fella in Argentina, Matt Meinzer, that yeah. was doing all sorts of crazy shit with hockey gear, eh? And he's a real equipment guy, building all of his own actual he's, stuff. That's, that's wild. fucking some stick shit. Building, building he, his own sticks, that is not a good, is well above equipment manager work. Building that's the sticks, but he also shit. had to like figure out how to like sharpen skates or fix steel. Yeah. He's got kids ripping around broken steel because they got nothing else. That's Interesting stuff like, you can hear in the shed, right? And so they were like welding the steel back together. They're, they're working <laughs> on making their own steel. <laughs> He's a, yeah. that's way more wow. advanced than any equipment guy. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> a million times more advanced than what we're doing here. Right. I'm uh, making old yeah. tech fit new tech. That's all I'm doing. Right. Um, and I guess uh other way we know each other, Deese, is that we talked about this the other time, but they just put out another video of you changing the steel out of a guy's skate on the bench. And <laughs> oh yeah, that was last it's week or something. Yeah, so zip, zip. you're uh well, I guess you're like quick draw in the equipment world right you're you're the fastest guy around or what the fastest gun in the west <laughs> i don't know how, how fast i am I'm, I'm maybe fast changing the steel i'm not so fast getting there <laughs> <laughs> you're not in those like, sandals yeah. you can't move quick yeah. have you nope. here's a question for you equipment guys have you guys ever gotten assist where a guy broke a stick and you got him his new stick before he went and then he went down and scored twice 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 feels good doesn't I, it Twice. I've come close. I've come close. That was it. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, didn't get yeah, it. I'm so thinking these because it's back to that speed thing we talked about. <laughs> no, it was good. It was to uh, it was to Tyson Strachan playoff finals. Uh, I think my last year in Cardiff, and he broke a twig on the play, and he swung through the bench. I gave him the new twig, and the puck squirted out to him, and he took a one t. And it, it just hit. I can't remember if it the goalie just got to it or it hit the pipe, but uh, I was super close to getting the, the straight yeah. in the assist. That's funny when that stuff happens. I had one a couple of years ago here, the guy, but empty netter, but it still counted. Just All the same count. on the stat sheet. I had, <laughs> I had a guy last year, I had a guy last year hit the pipe in overtime. If, and if that would have gone in during overtime, well, that would have been like, wild. Oh, if, yeah. you, if you just overtime, you would have broken open the good bottle that night, eh? <laughs> Bro, I was ready to cry, climb into the stands. Like I, I was ready to just go wild. Right. Yeah. And it went off the pipe. Uh, he came to the bench. Luke Adam came to the bench. He's like, "I'm so sorry, man." He's like, "That would have been huge." He's like, "That's once in a lifetime." I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and yeah. they knew that too. That's cool. Oh, he knew it right away. He knew it right away. It's fun to be part of hockey again. Um, yeah. for me too. And like. It, you know, people call it a shed boost, whether that's real or not. It's very yeah. interesting that when people come on and chat with me, that they seem to really get a boost. The fellow that just was on, Mitchell Martin, he just scored his first pro goal the next game. And like, whether he even remembers Zinga. he did a pod the night before, I get to take that with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pretend all, I had something to do with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm taking that. This game is Friday. So if something hits between me and D's, it's on you. That's right. Yeah. My wow. game's tomorrow. I got to go to Faravar tomorrow. Oh. You're going to Ooh. Hungary? Oh, I go see Fournier. That's the, that was the birthplace of the Twix craze. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ruth was there, right? Caruth was there, yeah. and uh, fun fact was Jeff Levecchio, my Jeff college roommate. Levecchio. He was the guy that uh, started it in Hungary, and I just happened to be a bit of an enabler, and I pushed it through to Cardiff, and then we're right in there with Denmark. Like, man, me and the Herring Blue Foxes really get along for us beating them in Game 7 when I played in Denmark. 
<laughs> um, yeah, so hungry. That's probably an interesting barn, eh, Dees? No, I hate it. Really? <laughs> I it's hate like, to go last there. year in that one, though, right? Yeah, you, they get a new barn. They they think if they oh, – they should make the playoffs, but they should be in there for the playoffs, they think, if it all goes to plan. But it's definitely – the last Why, season for me, bottom. I wouldn't want to change going into playoffs when your team has practiced all year on no, one ice. No. Might as well ride it out. Yeah, finish yeah, that season. That place is a dump of a rink, but an awesome environment. Which yeah, yeah, it matters really when you're playing. If you're the if you're the home team, they yeah. it, it's like the big blue tent. Wally Maxi never got to go there. Oh, but, it's uh, spot. The the big blue tent when that was rocking. You know, it gave it, it 100% gave you that extra boost. Oh, and yeah. They were the extra man on the ice view. And that's exactly what it's like in Faribar because the fans are on top of the bench. Uh, yeah. There's like this big plastic plexiglass dome over the bench and they're hammering on it and beating that's the wheels fine. out of it. I, I actually pretty much have the dock. Like, I can't really, there's like a ceiling on the bench. Yeah. So, like, like, so like I stand behind it like this, like, stand, it's wild. It's crazy. It's a rocking place, and there's fans. Since that one side goes like straight up, the fans that sit above the fence like lean out over above the bench, like lean out over the ice, right onto it. Yeah. See, I wrote notes down what we were going to talk about, and one of them was a favorite barns to go to. But I mean, you're kind of answering your own questions. That was a good oh, start on a barn right barns. there. What's oh, your favorite I'm, road trip? Bramerhofen. Nobody wow. in my league will ever say that, but I say Bramerhofen. Why? Why would you say that? I, well, one, I spent half a season up there, so like it's always fun to go beat the old club. We, so I, I know Bremerhofen well, and I, I even played in the old barn and the new barn. The other, the other is I got like friends outside of hockey there, so it's always a good time to like win up there. It's always get, nice. like, a, get like a Thursday night or Saturday night out with friends that aren't in hockey. No offense to people that are hockey people because I love it, but sometimes you get that break once or twice a season to go out to just like. Uh, like they're hockey fans, they're not players, they're not coaches, they're not other trainers and other yeah. staff, you know, that want to talk the game. So it's nice to get a couple times a year to just go out and, and have life, you know. Yeah. So back when I'm slumming it up in the second league in Germany, we would just yeah. bus up to Bremerhof and play that spiel and bus right back home. Oof. You're telling that me that, that you're trip. you're you're it was uh it would take all day. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's, so that's, that's like, you'd you'd wake up and have to be at the rink at say six, seven AM or something stupid. And you'd get on the bus and go back to bed for a while, and then you'd be up for a while, then you'd have you'd stop for lunch and then have another nap, and then you'd finally get there and you'd play the game at night, and then you would bus all the way back right after. I yeah. never stayed in a hotel yeah. once Ooh. when I played in Germany. No, we don't. Yeah, that's, we don't. Break. We do that for Munich, Ingolstadt, uh, all the Bavarian teams. Munich, Ingolstadt, Nuremberg, and Augsburg. Everywhere else we go day before. Is that right, eh? Yes. Big yep. time stuff in that yeah, yeah. DL. First league, sorry, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah, like, we won't even, if we if we play on Friday and we're leaving on Thursday for Bremerhof, and we won't even have to practice that day. We'll just leave at like nine o'clock, hit the road, stop for lunch somewhere along the way, get up there. Like, but you don't practice the day before the game? Like we not if we're going that far. Maybe, maybe we'll do something when we get up there, a workout or something, we get up there, and then you have pregame skate the next day. But if it's that far, we normally just take the day for the travel and get up there and have Man, a walk. Guys are getting soft. <laughs> <laughs> uh man that's uh that sounds right up my alley <laughs> I, I love it, the team walk <laughs> you all just kind of walk around and chat <laughs> there's yeah. teams here that are like getting rid of pregame skate on the hall i never it's believed in it track. i i'm not a pregame skater it's dying. And i liked them it's dying yeah it's i mean it it had its point in the 50s and 60s and 70s when you had to sweat out your booze well, and that's how it started, right? Was they wanted to sweat out the night before because they were going flying to all those yeah. cities like before the, the game. So they'd go out the night before and then they'd yeah. need a, a sweat. And then all of a sudden it became this thing because everybody needs to copy each other in hockey, right? Yeah. And, now, and now guys take so much better care of themselves. Oh, yeah, they do. It's yeah. really like, especially from when I started 20 years ago, like, the guys take such great care of themselves, supplements and workouts and everything, and they they 
players kind of got it right. They know what they need to be ready to perform. Right. Yeah. So, just charge the batteries and go. Uh, and yeah, some people want to skate more than others, right? Yep. There's always a couple. I got I got two guys that if the coach says we're having two days off, they're like, uh, can we skate with the juniors? Yeah. Is that right? I'm taking those yeah. days right off. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I say to him, I'm like, hey, you can skate with the juniors. Don't expect me to be here. See, everybody's no. wired differently, but um, I've never understood the people that like don't take breaks, that they don't take a breather from like skating. It's like some people skate throughout the summer too, and it, like I used to have to take a break yeah. to get excited to play again, you know. But what do you? Yeah. Know? Um. Okay. Poster picks. <laughs> Dece, you found that one in an air. I think we're in an airport. Eh? That's like on the way back from Belfast. <laughs> I think we're waffled, Wally. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I don't look that happy. No, he, you look like you just threw open a bathroom door on an aeroplane. <laughs> I think it was that trip. Shut up. You talking about the dump? Yeah, when you dumped on the plane and the whole plane was going to puke. <laughs> I think it was that trip. Back to you should have seen this. <laughs> I gotta tell. I gotta tell this story. <laughs> oh, a, sugar and spice. This a, is a tough Lodo, memory. I don't Lodo think this one's ever come shit. up. No, it ha- I think we kept it in the locker. Well, Lodo I, lost his shit in Belfast Airport with us for starters. Well, it was all just it was an adventure, but those flights from Belfast to Cardiff, like they're little tiny planes, Ooh. right? There's one shitter on it, and. You'd probably almost consider that like taking a dump on the team bus on the way to games, right? It's just there's no there's no pooping on those planes. No and, pooping well, on the bus. No, yeah, I got that. We had had a night the night before. We had uh, played Belfast. We had tried real hard, and then we had gone out and had a time. And boy, when that plane took off, I had to go to the bathroom. I, like, I had to go. So <laughs> I have to walk down the Ooh. aisle. Jesus and I, it wasn't a short one. I sat there. I, uh, you know, worked hard, mucked it up. Um, and then I've, I've come out of the bathroom and all the boys are like, Wally, come on. Are you kidding me? And this is in the middle of the plane when I'm walking down the aisle. And then it's two, a too. two little kids. Yeah. Two little kids get up and start walking towards well, the puking. toilet. And I just came out of there and all the boys are like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and all these that, kids, that these whole kids, plane was two puking. little kids walked right into just a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dees? That's pretty well the story. Oh. <laughs> I was at the back of the plane, and I was like, "What is that?" That was the worst smell? part. Was I think I was sitting at the back, and I had to walk past the whole plane yeah, to the front, you sat, take a dump, yeah. and then walk past everybody on the way. But back. you you'd managed, but you'd managed to make the whole plane from front to back stink, <laughs> and everybody's like, "Who is in there? Who has done that?" And then the door was just fast that did that to me. Belfast did just, that it, to me. <laughs> the door flew open, and you're there. Like, like in your bright red fucking tracksuit, and you just, do you remember what you did, Wally? Do you remember? You just, you just looked out, you just looked across the whole plane, and you just saluted. You just gave I the, saluted the plane? I did yeah, not. You did. That doesn't sound you did. like me. You can ask I it, probably I, walked, ask I probably walked back to my seat with my tail between my legs. <laughs> no, you just saluted. You kicked the door open. You just saluted and then held your head oh, high and Loney, just dropped it down the aisle. I obviously had to recognize that everybody on the plane realized I had just taken a dump. But oh, I didn't know. I, did I just kind of gave like a uh, like, uh, sorry, you know, <laughs> what, what do you want me to uh, do? <laughs> you got to own that one. I had to own it and I did I own think... it. I walked I right think back that was to my the same seat. Trip. I felt much comfortable. I had a much better you know, flight after that. Do you know what else happened on that trip? That's when Aglan had that thing in his eye, and it looked what, like he had a, a yeah, yeah. And we were calling him Igland for the for the whole trip. And then the smell, we were all like, "Hey, Aglan, did uh, your buddy explode? Is that what the smell is?" <laughs> oh. uh, some people just don't get hockey players and how ruthless we can oh. be. Telling oh, the truth the to worst. people, right? <laughs> the worst and the best. But it also, it also 
make builds character, makes you tougher and stronger. And Toughen your up. friends are very good at pointing out your flaws. <laughs> A lot that of is flaws, true. A lot of flaws. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for some reason, people always tended to, to bring up my eating and how, like, <laughs> I, I guess I don't know how to put it. The speed that of you my, wear, my and you wear most of it. You wear more than you eat, uh, especially if I've been drinking. Yes. Uh, so, so you struggle to eat a kebab, huh? I I never struggled to eat one. I he doesn't struggle those to every eat time. it. Yeah, I just get I get right in, in there. I, I get right in there, if you know what I mean. Then it gets a bit messy. There you know, yeah. Just well, you it. gotta get extra sauce on that stuff. You you're living in Germany. You you're by the good kebabs, eh? The Straubing got a high no, end game. The, no, the best kebabs are in Zagreb by far. Really? Yeah. Never I was been in Zagreb there. in the summer and they're sick. Yeah, they're way better down there than up here. By and they're doing good what? They're have better. you been? Have you been to the one by the Beatingheim Arena? No, we never stayed like right in Beatingheim. We stayed at the hotels a little bit away. So there's a kebab shop right by the arena, and I tell you, changes lives. But they got a pizza <laughs> oven. Nice. They got a pizza oven, and they uh, you put they roll the dough out fresh. They yeah. cook it fresh right in front of you. Oh, I like it when they. I do don't that. understand how it can be better in Zagreb. I just don't understand. That was. I think the I think the meat is better. And uh, I think the meat, meat tastes better because it's not as dry as it is here. Okay. A little juicier. And then the other thing, I like the toppings. Like corn is a topping option there. And I think like, yeah. like the corn on it is, yeah. is a selling point. I, I have no problem putting corn on there too. I agree. And yeah. Most, that's... And not all the ones in Germany have spicy sauce. Everyone there has spicy sauce. Like instead of just yogurt sauce, get some spicy sauce on there. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. It is lunchtime, and you are talking dirty to me officially, Maxie. <laughs> I guess we know each other well enough now that you can speak to me this way, because I am getting aroused. Uh, do you have anything to comment on now that we're into kebabs here? I- I'm not commenting on you getting aroused, one. Jesus no. Christ. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> feel sorry for Lisa. Uh, post- beer. Po- do you, like the- huh? you like the picture of the vice beer I sent today? Uh, yeah, that also yeah. is on my notes is um, <laughs> you were having a beer at a Fußganger zone, which I tell you, um, playing hockey in Germany, life is way better doing that there than in the East Coast. Um, yeah. When you can go sit outside and drink a beer and watch people watch all day and then have a nice meal and it's affordable. Um, I was really jealous when you sent me that picture because I bet you you ate lunch out there, too, didn't you? Uh, you know what? Not not lunch today. Actually, uh, that little uh, bar restaurant is next to the front door of my apartment. Oh, so I, we, I came back from picking up the little guy from kindergarten. You call that the, the honey boys, hole, then, eh? <laughs> yeah, a couple, well, there were a couple of the boys were sitting there, and I took my little guy upstairs, and of course they had to message me, "Come down for one." So, oh, hey, honey, it's a nice day. I'm going downstairs for one. Well, that's the thing. When it's a nice day, people are outside in Europe, right? Like, yeah, it was it was a beautiful day out. It was warm, like, uh, like twenty twenty five degrees, sitting in the sun. I understand. Yeah, a couple of ice beers. It was a good time. I do know. I couldn't drink the vice beer. I my attitude is right. I like them, but they did not agree with my body type. Um, Okay. Yeah, I'd get too fat. Yeah, I only like them on a sunny day. Like, I can't drink them all night long or anything. Just a couple on a sunny no, night. No, just a couple. Otherwise, you've got to start chewing them. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't go past two. But there are those psychopaths out there that they could drink eight to ten vice beers, eh? And like, well, that's wild. That's, that's lunatic. Nope. I know. I agree. Um, yeah, so that was right in Straubing. That just, oh, man, that's the stuff I miss, though. It's weird what you miss, right? Like, I miss the, yeah. the Fußganger zone, sitting outside at restaurants, outdoors, and people watching and eating outdoors with my teammates and people watching. That's yep. fun. It's the best. Just people walking by all day long. Okay. I'll stick with you, Maxi, for the poster yeah. picks. The next one's at the beer tent, you and the gal right or the frau, um, the frau with uh, the big masts of beer, right? Eh? Yes. Oh yeah. She was having a Rattler, the little mix with like the lemonade or the, mm, the half and half. Those are like, yes. the, those, those are the driving beers, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. She's not a big beer drinker, so not all of the tents have a separate like bar. So one of the, most of the tents she can get her gin and tonic in, but uh, when there's a couple of them, you can only get beer and rather. So she had to deal with one of them. 
did you ever get the bruise on your hand like the next day when you've been holding that mast around and the top of your hand like your thumb there it's like bruised from holding the beer all night that like it's so heavy <laughs> by the end of the night or the next day like there's a bruise on your hand you know i feel like that's a drinking your beer too slowly problem is that right or yeah, is it standing yeah. up and it's in your hand the whole yeah, time yeah, swinging maybe, and maybe you're maybe, just sitting at the table letting it rest yeah. right i'm yeah. getting involved i'm in the action yeah. maybe you're dancing <laughs> a little too much right, right? Really well you get joanna de on the on the system yeah. i mean oh, i'm yeah. i am not sitting down for that song i don't care yeah. and that country road song the germans love oh, that one that gets yes. the place oh. hopping <laughs> every time oh yeah and then uh, the song Lila. Oh, sorry. everybody's just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one that like I always post right now, the Cowboy Indiana song. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, <laughs> that gets the places playing. rocking. Try and sit down with that music playing in a mast in your hand, right? Well, then you're like, I remember my wife. She really hadn't been at nighttime before for the festival. She'd been around during the day. She hadn't seen like the beer tent part of it. So like, we we're standing on the table. She's like, "What are we? What this is oh, awesome." Yeah. Yeah, it is awesome. It's as fun as fun gets, right? And I'm a, I'm a pretty big guy, so everybody worries. Like, these tables it, hold tons of people. Tons, yeah. And everybody's yeah, standing. You. Everybody's standing oh, yeah. on the benches and just yeah. smashing mass in the middle and sweating and singing. It's something. And then like Ziggy's like, Ziggy's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then some guy will get up and like chug a beer upside down, right? Yeah, yeah. I and I, gotta, like, uh, you got to make eye contact. Just random people walk by you, give you a cheers, but you got to stare them right in the eye. <laughs> yeah, you got to give them the prost. Prost, yeah. yeah. So, D, K, next for you for poster picks. What's with that blow up costume in the <laughs> locker room there? What is going on there? That was uh, that was Cabina Fest, right? At the start of uh, that's this year. About two. Yeah, two, three weeks into training camp. So I hijacked one of the young kids. One you, were, of the... you were letting everybody know you were Dees and yeah. uh, <laughs> you're here for a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, it might have been drunk, this guy in Australia that day. Yeah, letting people know you're Dees. <laughs> yeah, so you're just, letting know who I was. In the locker room. Yeah, yeah. It's my safety suit. <laughs> uh, um, so why would that guy have had that outfit there? Everyone is fancy dress for uh for Cabina Fest. Oh, and okay. Like, and fancy dress, there's... you mean dressed in costumes. That's what fancy yeah, dress yeah, yeah. means. Yeah. Yeah. Costume party. So That's a British was... thing. We don't we say dressing up around here, but yeah. Yeah, so we had three or four I think they split the team into three or four different groups and each group had to like all come as the same thing. So there was like six of those big red Martians. There was uh <laughs> I can't say a lot of things actually. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, that, but that blow up costume you had that brings back Western Michigan for me. Me and my college roommates, um, when it's Halloween, we swept the weekend against Ohio State. We hosted the most epic college party you could think of. Um, and also went to the bar that night somehow. Um, and I was a blow up shark. And then we had like, Oof. you know, the guy riding the horse, uh, my roommate. Love that one. Right. And then another guy was a sumo wrestler. I thought there was another one. And we hit the town like that. And um, I did do some directing of traffic around Kalamazoo that night in my shark outfit. <laughs> but uh, blow, blow up costumes can work for fun. Right. You got to You got to pick your costume on what you can drink with. Like that. that That's thing part of picture. it. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, like that, those stupid that, outfits yeah, that tough. we had. When we went skiing, me, Hendo, and Pigs, where it's the skin tight thing yeah. with the Spider Man yeah, stuff, like, you can't oh, get a beer in your mouth. You get, yeah. You got to take the head off, and then you're not even Venom yeah. anymore. <laughs> no. So the, then a whole aesthetic. Right. So you gotta, you got to plan your costume around your drinking. Don't plan your drinking around your costume. That's no good. Right. Well, sound like a. Life advice by Dees. Right? That's Dees. There you go, folks. So, you uh, learned something today well, in the well, shed, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Follow um, me for more, for more tips. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to don't like, follow. comment, and subscribe. Don't, don't okay, follow me, kids. Next poster well. pick. <laughs> shed guy selfies are so fun, and so are shed gal and guy selfies. Um, You guys had oh, a shed man, guy man. selfie, eh? What game was that at? Yeah. Mm. That was in Champions League last year. Uh, he yeah. came over 
Uh, he came over to Feloc when we were playing in Champions League last year there. Right. And that's that when a, I got the picture of you guys time. with lamps too, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. That's it. Shed guys, no shed guys. So, um, so they had to smuggle me into the game. Yeah, and, snuck him uh, in, right? He just threw on a warrior jacket, walked right in. With <laughs> on a warrior jacket, rolled straight in. Sometimes you, you, sometimes you just gotta know. Out. You gotta know how these hockey arenas work and how to yeah. how to do things. It's like it was, they. I took my son to the Red Wings Islanders game, and uh, and Kuhn Hackle was hurt. He never came with the Islanders, so I lost my in to meet players. And I I was planning on being a good dad that night, so. By gosh, we found our way down to the basement. <laughs> Chino slides in a polo shirt gets you everywhere in hockey. Yeah, um, yeah, so, that's uh, the that was the night we got the picture with picture of him and Barzell, right? Like you know, I remember fun. that one. <laughs> yeah, but the, but that night with Maxi, I was on their bench for warm up, just yeah. chilling, hanging out, and their equipment guy just did the double take, and he's my buddy, and he's like, "What the." What are you doing? Here? <laughs> yeah, he, I put these in my double XL jacket. Like these isn't yeah. the smallest of guys, but I'm significantly bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like was swimming in my jacket. <laughs> I was just waddling around in my straubing jacket. I, I can't even. picture how big you are if you're saying that these is swimming in your jacket because these oh, when these got out there on the ice there at Josh Batch's testimonial. Um, my gosh, it. Seemed like it had been a while since he had exercised. <laughs> it's been a while, Mike. Well, like it's been a while. Six foot eight. Six foot eight. Yeah, yeah. two hundred Max, Max is eight. like Sasquatch. Right. That's big. <laughs> so yeah, so these is like the jacket went down to like Deez's knees. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a swamp thing. <laughs> okay, here's a cutting edge question. You're yeah. wearing a hat that has number eighteen and forty one on it with hockey sticks. What's the hat's that about? Max, oh. yeah, it was in a poster. I was, I, I'm, I'm looking. 19, I'm like 1941. 1941. Oh, 1941. In oh the it's 1941. I thought it was 18. Yeah, 1941. Eyes, is well, the year the Shaolin Tiger started. They're that old. Yeah, life was pretty good in Germany in 1941. Um, that's <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> If you liked walls, <laughs> uh, bombs. Um... <laughs> they, they were like doing well in 1941. Like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, because everyone else was at war. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Um, but no, but for real, that's the year the team started. So yeah, it's that old. It started. And it, uh, it is neat to think about um, afterwards. Like, well, I guess it was being in that ice hockey news article and having that yeah. as like when you think about it. Once you're in a team's history and you were part of something cool, it's like that history never goes away, right? It's like yeah. when they talk about landsuit and stuff, they talk about that year we went to the finals and. um like I think it's even on like their Wikipedia page. It's like this yeah, team sure went this is. far, and it's like Brandon Dietrich and Brent Walton were on that team, and it's like that's so cool. And they're writing about two Elmira Sugar Kings and playing for the Landsuit Cannibals. I think it's neat. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. The history here is awesome. But I love the ho- uh, the history of like hockey in Germany in general, where it's it was mainly an outside sport. Right. You know, like it, it never. You know, like we all know hockey started outside, but. The NHL, it started as indoor arena sport. Like the DEL started as an outdoor sport. And hockey was an outdoor sport. And when sport, I first got late. there, man, it was they were season. they were getting a lot of new arenas in Germany yeah. when I was getting like, there. And there like were still some outdoor college. barns, man. Like Ravensburg, yeah. the ta- the team I played against that had this nice new arena. I was told just the year before I got there, they were still at, like no roof. It was just it was an outdoor yeah. arena. Yeah, Augsburg just put like walls on, like they had a roof, but open walls. And they were up until like 10 or 11 years. It was like 10 or 11 years ago. They finally closed it. And that's in the first league. Yeah, that's, it's wild. It, and yeah. there, it is cool history around, right? Yeah. And yeah it, guys, it's so weird like, how I, every I season though is new. Like every, yeah. every season just keeps happening. We keep getting older. You guys are still in the game and I'm still talking to the shed, but it's like now we're talking to this is another new season. You guys yeah. have all new players again and stuff, you know? Yeah, this is year 20. Jeepers. It happens so fast, year, doesn't it? I think it's year 10. Oh, like, yeah, it is year 10. Like, like, I, like, it's way too fast. Like, 
I was talking about that, uh, like, I was in we were in Wolfsburg, and I was like, man, I felt like we were just here. We were there for playoffs uh, seven months ago, you know? Like, well, and like for ago, me, like, it's interesting with this coaching the kids thing was I had my year with the girls, and they were so little, and that year flies by, and we have so much fun. And then you see that picture of those girls, and then you go to the rink and see them play now, and they're so much bigger. And, like, they're never going to be those same kids I coached. And, like, yep. they're going to keep getting bigger and bigger until all of a sudden it's going to be like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. The train when keeps rolling. Like college students that you coach, like, what is going on? Yeah. And um, I, I'm starting to get it because, like, seeing what Colby's playing now, man, there's – what the one kid I moved from D to center and he just had his first time doing it this last game. And he came up to ask advice about positioning and where to be. And then he was as tall as me. He was standing eye to eye with me at the arena. And I'm like, this is my centerman. And he's as tall as me. And I'm like, this is five foot two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. D's. Thanks. D's. Thanks for coming in there. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> um, Dees, how's your squad look? You guys have been mediocre for decades. <laughs> yeah, we're we're actually a, a hell of a lot better than last year. That's what you're supposed um, to say. Yeah, we're a hell of a lot better than last year. Great group, though. Really good group. Um, That's so what far, matters. I, yeah, I haven't got a single guy where I'm like, oh my god, shut up. Right. You know, every year you 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 know, as an equipment guy, you get one guy where you're like, Jesus Christ. But uh, touch wood, he, he, maybe he hasn't come out with shell yet, or maybe I don't have one. Hopefully I don't have one. But uh, we've played three. Uh, we've lost one regulation, and we've lost two in OT. So, and also the one we lost in regulation was a two loss. So. And then we've got a fair of our tomorrow, so i got to try and pull one out there. Um. It is interesting when you talk about the hockey stuff and when you're playing, every game is so important, eh? Like, man, oh yeah. You go on uh, you go on a losing skid in Europe, man. It costs people their jobs, <laughs> you know. But they've already had the first coach fired in the Austrian league this year. Yeah. Well, already? Zano and, Zano and Italy already fired their coach. He didn't even make it to the end of yeah. October. They like they <laughs> lost the Belfast in Champions lines. League. They they were like 0 oh, and three or 0 oh, and four in Champions League, 0 oh, and three to start the regular season. See you later. They lost like, all their mm-hmm. Champions League games and their regular season games. Yeah, mm. and pretty much all their preseason they won games. One and... game, but they did. I don't know. I, I thought they lost all four. They could have won one. Uh, they <laughs> lost to Belfast, and they lost to Belfast yeah. in that run, like four nothing or something in Belfast. I think it was four yeah. nothing. They lost. They got shellacked. Um, they lost the three regular season starters, and see well, you that, later. That's I what's in it. I find it interesting when, like, that they, it, I'm not nearly as stressed out as I used to be. When I was a hockey player, man, those games were stressful and you don't really think about it and you try and keep it light and fun. But, like, especially when you're five foot eight and kind of fat, you better score some points. (laughs) You better score points and win, or they might get like a six foot guy that's like skinny. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there is high pressure being imports for sure. Oh, it's a totally different thing. Yeah, and no, that yeah, so Lamps is on your team again, and he are he yeah. announced it in the shed that this was his last season, eh? Yes, that's what he's saying. Yep, yep. Hockey needs more guys like that. He's a beauty. He's been, playing, he's been playing forward. What? He's been playing forward this year. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he he said to me in Wolfsburg the other night. He's like, man, if I keep playing this role, if I play this role, I can play ten more years. <laughs> what four, like, fourth line wing? Yeah, yeah, playing like seven to ten shifts a game, like bat- mucking and banging, and like he's he's honestly they're doing a great job of getting the puck out of the D zone, getting it deep into the O zone, and either getting for a change or getting it frozen in the O zone, and then the first line could come on for a face off. That's exactly uh, what you want of a fourth exactly line in did. Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like boom, he's boom. mucking and banging hard. He would he, muck like, and bang hard, wouldn't he? Yeah, I, I honestly, I think he's. He's a great defenseman. Honestly, I like him better as a forward. Really? Yeah, um, yeah. I, like I find forward. it interesting, right, when uh, I'm switching some kids around here in the real world um, and, you know, people put them wherever in minor novice or whatever, and it's like, well, um, to help our team, I think he's this now. And it's like, you know, um, it's up to the coach. <laughs> you know, like, yep. 
you want to be on the team and you want to, us to win, I need to be able to put the pieces of the puzzle where they need to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say Lambs, your role. Is ultimate, Lambs is the ultimate player that says okay to that. Right. He's just a team guy. Yeah. I can tell exactly yeah. who he is. And he wants to yeah. bring everybody together and show everybody yeah. um, we're all going to do whatever it takes to win. And we're all going to do it together. And we're going to do what's asked of us. And that's how you win. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He knows what it takes in this league. He's won before. Yeah. Poster pick. Yeah. Dees. I hope you're between your two nostrils there. My word. That's close. Um, I'm, I'm right between. I'm all right. Holy moly. Um the, you're in a Sheffield Steelers jersey playing hockey. What is that about? I was playing for the Steelers there, Wally. You were playing for the Sheffield Steelers? Uh, I played a played a preseason game for the Steelers in Cardiff against the Devils. Why? Because the Devils Short didn't players? want me. No, the Devils didn't want me. And Steelers you a... wanted me. Really? Um, so I uh, played the a game. The Steelers wanted you? You supposed to have gone back up to Sheffield with the team bus and then I was young and dumb I think I was 17 or 18 in that picture and I was in love with a Cardiff girl and I don't want to go and blah 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 cheapers love is love I didn't didn't get back on the bus and now I'm like what a dumbass but uh, I'm here now and I wouldn't have got here maybe if I took that journey so so you were 17 or 18 and you were a prospect in the hockey world and you're saying Cardiff didn't want you, but Sheffield did. Yeah. Strange. And you were living in Cardiff and they said, why don't you lace up for this preseason game and then come yep. back to Sheffield with us? Yep. And I was supposed to Cardiff for playing them the next night in Sheffield. So, uh, but I didn't get on the bus. Um, I was young and dumb and scared of the world. I was once a timid young boy. Were you? Yeah, of my own shadow. Jeepers. I can't see that. You've really come out of your shell then. Oh, I came out that shell. <laughs> I burnt that shell. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, sure. If that's true, then that's true. Um... So I tell you who my coach was. <laughs> the coach that game was... Uh... Let me think. It was it was Dave Whistle, I think, was the coach of Sheffield that game. Dave it was either Whistle. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't Dave Whistle. Shit, who was it? Fuck, I forget who it was. But that was also the season I ended up playing a few games for the Devils later on in the season. Uh, and Whistle was the coach there. I forget who it was. Um well, it doesn't really decks. matter, but you know what? I you were a professional hockey player. You it is uh, it, the research team far. does find that, I guess, right? I but wouldn't go so far as that. Right. I mean, I've seen you do Juice Boy. I've seen you play Juice Boy, and that's why some of the story just isn't lining up for me, you know? <laughs> 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 but I guess British hockey's like come elephant. a long way. British hockey's yeah, come a long, a long way, way, and they probably needed Real some domestic elephant. players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were like, I was good with the oak court. That's all it was. Well, what's Great. the pos the poster pick where you look like you're having a lot of fun? Is you're like on the old person scooter, um, with glow in the dark glasses on. You look like you're having fun <laughs> oh. that night. What's going on there? Oh, I went to Benidorm for what's like it? four or five days. Benidorm is in Spain, and it's just like the Spanish Vegas. Oh dear, and it's just a, an absolute shit show. There's really, people why have I never heard of it? on their shoes. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's the Spanish people... Chippy Lane. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable, Wally. There's at least a mile of bars, straight bars either side, and they got those robotic bulls. They got strip shows. They got all sorts of weird <laughs> shit going on. Right up your alley. Right up your alley. <laughs> oh, oh, so oh. it was. Mm. It was probably the best. Five nights I've had in many years. What well, Benidorm? Benidorm. It's it's. Why Spain. have I never I heard of this, a... Maxie? Have you heard of this? Never heard of it until he told it, me. About I it. I think it's a British thing. And uh, well, shed, free ads, Benidorm, and look, you know, tourism's gonna it's, get, go it's up. It's wild. <laughs> so I'm um, going. My I'm in I'm in my buddy's uh, one of the in the wedding party for one of my buddies. And we we did the wedding group on WhatsApp this week, and it, I, I I set it up, and I just straight up said, "We're going to Benidorm. That's where the stag do is. That's that's where we're going for the bachelor party." And everyone was like, "Okay." 
So I'm so excited. <laughs> it's just be a gonger. Right. Yeah. Um, well, just don't overconsume. Do you try and hang in there the whole night, eh? Yeah, I always hang in the whole night. Somewhat. I just lose touch of reality for a small We're, while. Yeah. In right. And then all of a sudden, like, there needs to be babysitters. We don't need babysitters, right? Be ready yeah, to go I, all night long, right? Yeah. Not okay. very often I need a babysitter, <laughs> but I normally take myself out the equation and sit in a corner for 20 minutes. Then I'm okay. Yeah, you give yourself a timeout. That, that's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you need Smart. a timeout. Yeah. Smart. Um, Maxi, you guys signed, like, I would call this a big fish for Germany and Straubing, that Justin Braun. He is fresh yeah. out of the NHL. Yep, yeah, straight to us. He's uh, friends with the guy that's been playing here already. Our Makes goalie, sense. the Hunter Miska. So they, they knew each other. <clears throat> so it just kind of worked from there. Right. Because he's been in, he, he's been a, like a full time NHL guy since 2010. Yeah, yeah. He played like what, Philly and San Jose and maybe a little bit in, for the Rangers there. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'd hate to say this to the guy because he probably already knows. But in Germany, you come over with a resume like that, there's going to be some people putting some pressure on you. <laughs> you got to deliver. Uh, oh. Yeah, but you, you know what? Like, he, he delivers because he, do, he he plays in his means. He plays the same role. He's not over-expected to do, you know, anything that... So what is his role? He's like a PK 5-on-5 yeah, five five guy? Yeah, PK 5-on-5. Five five. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he's a good leader. Because right. he... You know, he, he's good with these young, like, here's, that's here's the, that's, thing that's, that's the thing I found in Germany though, is you bring over these AHL, NHL guys and they thought they were going to be a different player. They thought they're going to be yeah. a first line player. And it's like, yeah. well, he's played in the fourth line for a decade. So how do you think he's going to come over here and score three points a game? Cause he yeah. has you know, he scored 10 goals in goal. years, <laughs> you know, you, don't become, you just don't become a goal scorer. No, I, I agree with that. My biggest thing, I, my biggest thing I'll say about him is, uh, we had like a team dinner months ago by now, like right when we were all first getting here, and uh, you know how sometimes those are when you got like half a team imports and half a team of Germans. It sometimes turns into like the Germans sit here and the imports are here. Yeah, yeah. And bro, he was like, he was the only one that went and sat with like all the Germans. He sat with the young Germans. Yep. Not just like the Germans, and just like, oh, you're you're this guy, and you're from here and there, and got like. He got to know them. You know, he got that, to know his yeah. teammates. Yeah, exactly. Like he doesn't. He doesn't look at any of his teammates, whether it's these young, because over here you get these 16, that's, 18 that's year olds that are pulling around and stuff, you know. And he so, treats those guys the same as he treats the thirty year old veterans that are with him, you know. Sounds like he's a shed guy. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? I he does not talk uh, a whole lot more than one on one conversations. He's not a, a, loud, a loud, loud room guy or anything like that. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, but that's what those young Germans, I mean, you can make an impact on them when he's the guy yeah. that comes over because they're obviously going to be looking up to the guy and that he yeah, actually yeah. takes the time to get to know them and everything. That's that's yeah. how you build teams. Yeah, yeah. So I, some of those imports I've seen in the past, there's no chance they'd be going to do that. So it was right. So yeah, it was it was a big signing for us, and I, I, I think he likes it too. He was looking to play a little bit more under the radar, you know, you, those big clubs, uh, that's where the pressure is. You come here and you're the superstar and we, you know, we don't, we fired one player in five years since I've been here. Like it's just, it's just we, we make our decisions and we stick with who we got. So you, it, it's, it's a good thing for those guys, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, playing in Germany when it's the right situation for you, it makes hockey fun. Right. And, yeah. Then you see some of those people, like you say, the big clubs where there's all that pressure and it's just can't be that much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they lose touch of reality. Maybe they have one good year where they win a championship, but the rest of the time it's like <clears throat> it's miserable and you get treated like a soldier, not like a hockey player. And... The piece of meat. Yeah. Right. And, and if you have a few tough games, like they they can, they got money. <laughs> Well, yeah, like Mannheim there a couple of years ago when they extended their coach at like Christmas time and then by the end of January they fired him. <laughs> I but remember like, that. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, Gross and the like, all the had an assistant coach. They just extended they extended them and then one month later fired them. Maybe maybe like, it was early December they extended them and then, and then by the end of January, early February, they were out. Uh because and honestly what had happened is like you know the 
playoff system works here with the pre-playoffs and all that, right? So like, oh yeah. When they when they when they extended him, they were like second place in the league, and they're like by far, maybe even first place in the league by far. And then by the time they were down in like fifth place, and so like if you took just those games from the extension to when he got fired, they were only like a twelfth place team in the league. They the only right. reason they stayed up so high was because of how hot their start was. And that's yeah, they, they were I, Yeah, and uh, I think I, it's going to be interesting for my season because I'm now a coach, but I find there's coaches that teams get better throughout a season and get more yeah. ready. And then when you see teams getting worse throughout a season, that usually might not be the player's fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a pretty factual statement. Wow, but it's up to the players too to keep her going too. And um yeah, but anywho. Um Dashy's still there, eh? From my old yeah, land land suit here. cannibal days. Yeah, yeah. He just had a baby girl a couple like about a month ago. All the puppies are all <laughs> growing up now, eh? Yeah. Wild. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got a yeah. So yeah, he's he's great, man. I like him a lot. Me and him ch- chat a lot because I've got into that Formula One sport quite a bit and he likes it a bit. He likes it quite a bit. So that's been our like, that's, daily that's, catch yeah, up. Every that's day. your connection. Uh, you you yep, always yep. need the guy you talk to about certain things, but yep. um, every team's different, right? And where you get your coach from, they bring in the people they want or whatever. Yep. Um, Straubing, um, if you look at the last few years since this guy's been the coach, it's mainly Canadians and Americans are the imports. Uh, this year, the only one is Alf Samuelson's boy, who is also American and Swedish, and everybody else yeah. is Canadian and American again. Deese will get into yeah, you I mean, later. <laughs> and off, off is mostly I would or off's kid there, Sam uh, Philip. I mean, like yeah, he's Swedish. I would say he's mostly American. Right. Like, he he grew up he grew up pretty much. And I I asked him, I was like, where'd you grow up? He's like everywhere my dad was. We yeah. went where he played. We went where he coached. You right. know, like they did some summers in Sweden and he played some professional seasons in Sweden and stuff like that. But like, well, and coaches take players yeah, from yeah. where they know and they everybody has their yeah. own network or their own shed family, as you'd call it. And they get people for, that they people that vouch for them and trust. Right. Yeah. Um, are, De- Deese, you are, got a Swedish coach. You got. Yeah. You got. Love my coach. Norwegian. Aus- Aus- well, obviously, Austrians, Swedes, Finn, so. a Slovak. Right and an American, Slovene, and a Slovene, Slovenian, Slovak, sorry, yeah. Slovenian. Hey, okay. yeah, you're you're quite international. Very international. It's uh, well, that's why we're called the, the Ice League. Ken Ogryensik. Uh, is his yeah. is his nickname Ogre? No, his nickname's Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sometimes you get smacked around buddy (laughs) but i find it interesting right because then when i do see a couple north americans on your team deese and the research team does get hot and click away well by gosh they played in sweden (laughs) yeah yeah well that's you know you've got a swedish coach so right you know who you know you know the people he's got his pool so you know those guys are gonna have swedish connections for sure and how do you so, fit in uh, this mix of a, a Welshman with all these? Uh, I'm my own guy, Wally. You know that. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I, I, I just, I just, I just am. There is no doubt you're your own guy. <laughs> these is just these doing these things. That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Just, just floating around, just cruising. Just and cruising. he fits in and you fit in, yeah. right? You're behaving yourself cruising. still? Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm re- actually really well. But apart from my one blip where I was drunk, this guy in Austria, that the Bina Fest, it's right. been really good, really good. good. You know, that's good. You're and, growing up. Uh, yeah, single guy about town, so I've been good. You know, I've been single since uh, let me think now, Christmas time. So I've been really well behaved, really good actually. So, yeah, good for you. It's interesting. It's interesting times, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've been out for a few dinners beverages with the guys but well, nothing, that's that's interesting because my, my next question on my list here is what's the best meal you've had lately actually actually the best meal i had was what day are we today we're uh monday right so saturday night we we had 
uh, practice Saturday morning, Saturday off. We had no game on Sunday, so we had Sunday off. Me and oh. the uh, me and the assistant coach went to this little Italian, and oh my god, it was phenomenal. I feel to start. You're like cutting out right now. Holy moly, you, Wally! You say what did you? What did, yeah, what did you have to start? Holy cats! Congrats. We lost these. We lost these. Carpaccio. Carpaccio. Philly, and I love oh. that. Am I there? Wow, no, you yeah. fucking you suck me? right now. You need to be better. Play better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like the team. It's like the team yesterday and smash seven one. Just be better, like you know. No excuses. Yeah, play like a champion. So, uh, Carpaccio. So I, what exactly is, yeah. is that? The piece of steak that's rolled into like a thing. It's raw beef fillet steak, like raw, raw, like raw? raw. Yeah, sliced really thin, and then they serve it. Oh, to... I know what you're talking about. It's on like a platter, right? Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's that's awesome. So I had that as a start, and it comes with some warm like bread drizzled with garlicky olive oil. Um, you will never turn a, me on, Dees. Keep trying. Then I had a carbonara as a main, Keep and going. then they gave us they gave us this side dish of truffle gnocchi, Lost and that me. was my tiny little dish. But it was it was mind blowing. I took Bouncy there actually when he was in town. Tr- and, um, truffles are the nice mushrooms. You kind of lost me there, but the gnocchi yeah, are a nice yeah. touch too. Yeah. So, and then I had, uh, what did I have? Some like hot chocolate muffin with like liquid hot chocolate and some vanilla ice cream was my dessert. And that was, oh, we, we had a real high end bottle of red. Yeah. Yeah. So huh. we, we look like a, a right pair of, uh, what's, I don't know what the political correct word is these days but yeah that anyway i understand uh that sounds like a lovely meal and those are the things of playing hockey in europe that you get to do um yeah i remember going to restaurants where like even when my parents come over and you go to these restaurants and they're like this is the best meal i've ever ate and i'm like i know (laughs) it's always the most suspect looking restaurant it's not new it's not fancy It's not like, and Chinese then you you whatever. get a real Italian down there that knows yeah. what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and, yeah, oh this, exactly. Even here, the best places to go out. It's all like in Germany, the best places to eat. I swear, like the the restaurants at the little hotels. Yeah, you know, you go, the sketchy you places go, like, where you're like, why were you going here? And then you go and you're like, like, wow, yeah, unbelievable schnitzel mit pommes. Oh yeah, oh. there you go, Maxi talk. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I hate schnitzel. Shut oh, your dude. mouth when you're talking to me. I do. We're fed it so no, often that I'm just it. like, uh. You're fed schnitzel so often you don't like it. Whatever. No, Grow up. I'm yeah, wait till, it. wait till it stops. Wait till you get back to Wales someday and you're like, God, all I want is a schnitzel. Then you got to bread it uh, yourself. You got to fry it yourself. And I will. I I will. But, Saying that when they did when they give us a cordon bleu schnitzel here, it's good. When they give us the pork schnitzel, I'm like, eh, see you later. Oh no, veal, veal schnitzel. Veal's really good, but we don't get that too often because it costs more money. Um, I mean, I don't know. I remember in Germany, the Kaufland or whatever you go grocery shopping, you'd get all your groceries. You'd be being a great husband. You got the groceries, and then on your way out. There's the half chickens as well yeah, as yeah, a schnitzel yeah. stand. There's a goddamn no, schnitzel stand schnitzel with, with fresh buns with no, the mustard that yeah. makes your nose run. And then you walk no. out of there with a few more chest hairs and you just feel great. Oh, mit, 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 zamp. Mit, zamp, yeah. Yeah. And you're just running. Oh, yeah. gosh. I'm hungry now. No. Sharp, sharp, zamp. Yes, gay now. <laughs> <Get out>. uh, <laughs> um, okay, here's a cutting edge question. What's your guys as equipment managers? What's your favorite drill you see in practice? Just wondering as a coach here. You don't even care, I, I Maxi. Don't, I don't pay that much attention, <laughs> Wally. Nobody, I, neither uh, of you do, eh? No, I hate practice, but I watch it. I like watching I spot. I, if, 
aesthetically, I like watching small area games. I like anything where it's a yeah. little bit right. competitive and they get the juices flowing a little bit, where it gets a little physical. And yes, I agree. Yeah, they the flow the, drills they the can put anybody to sleep. Blue. Exactly, exactly that. Like, flow drills have their point, get your feet moving, but I want to see a small area games. Muck yeah. it up. I like watching a strong power play practice or like the three on three on short ice, things like that. Yeah, they, they bring the nets inside the blue line. So we're just in one zone and we're just battling end yeah. to end. And you play like you, you sometimes we play five and five like that, and it's absolute chaos. Yeah. And other times it'll be a three on three, or it, that's what I I enjoy watching. Like yeah. Maxi says, we're doing a flow, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. I uh, I'm I was on the Instagram same. then just scrolling. Oh god, we gotta <laughs> pass the puck here and skate a circle and then take this pass and then give a pass and yeah. take this pass and then and do a little do the, back do and the forth pinwheel on the and, and you're and like it on a two on oh, right? <laughs> oh yeah and then like give a backdoor yeah. tap in on the goalie just to piss off the goalie on a shot that he never has a chance of getting and you're just trying to warm yeah. him up to you and like just, like it's just grumpy. Nobody the likes goal- that. He doesn't give it. Oh, it's like when they make you do the horseshoe all the way to the other end, oh. and you then oh. they they like go to like two on o or two on one or three on o, and you're like, we're going again, and it's like you get on a smaller roster in Germany when you have no money, and you're like, like we have to go again, and it's like I, I I'm not ready to skate all the way down there again, <laughs> like, yeah. and what to get a pass from that corner way down there, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and then you gotta give it right back and take another one, and then this, and then like oh just, yeah. Yeah, I get I, it for I get like one or two of them. To, I get like one or two of them to get warming up, but other than that, I can't watch that small I, area game where it's at. I can't either. And you know, you, you did mention power yeah, play practice. Yeah, I love I me a good power play practice. Yeah, that gets yeah. my juices full too. Especially the only time I get pissed off is if my penalty killers weren't trying as hard because yeah. then it's like, well, I need to know if this is going to work in a game. So can you please try? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I like it. I I really like a good day when you see the penalty killers winning and they're like the young kids not. Oh, supposed they, to. and they and then they start cheering. Yeah. and they piss off yeah. the the imports and yeah. The, the imports like are rattled and there's dogs. fucking slap yeah. shots, pucks just flying. And th- everywhere. Those kids, those kids can celebrate <laughs> when they clear. Yeah, I do yeah. know what you mean. Okay, you guys do live in Europe and are living the life still. What any been anywhere cool lately? In the off season, did you do anything fun anywhere neat? I don't know about. I mean, we went to Cincinnati to see the family, hang out with my mom and dad, That's, sister, brother. That and, sounds exciting, but you got to. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, Vuk needs all my open time as much as we need a little bit of a break. You know, like mm-hmm. we had no no grandparents here to drop the kid off with, right? So it's nice when we get that opportunity. For sure, Dees, yeah. you were doing other. You were in Cardiff quite a bit, eh? I was in. Uh, I was in Cardiff. For the, for the whole summer, apart from my five days in Benidorm. Uh, but I came back to Graz pretty early this year. I was in um, I was in start of July because I had to go back to Croatia for a week and have the teeth finished. Right. So, yeah, uh, which looked nice. We're almost going to start calling yeah. you David. <laughs> David there. Owen. Who is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so the teeth are finished. Um, most unbelievable pain in my life. For a, for a fair few days and then Oof. like been yeah. three months since they've been finished and then I still have discomfort see I had a tough time with family matters and stuff um, so yeah but I, I had a good summer I had a really good summer to be honest I, I can't complain but I didn't okay. do anything crazy last question for you guys because every season you start out and everything's new. The team's new. You haven't come together yet. Then you start having exhibition games and games, and then you start finding your rhythm and routines as a team. But you also have individual things with players. Do you guys have anything you do with any players? Like, this guy needs me to pat his ass at this time, or, <laughs> you know, like, every there's different routines you get into that get yeah, weird. There's, there's they get weirder as guys. the season goes on, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, get, I gave up on those a couple of years ago. I used to have handshakes and oh, yeah, crazy yeah, stuff, but I kind of lost it a couple of years ago, so right now, I... You're getting a bit weathered in your 20th year, year, eh? Yeah, I, I don't know what ha- I, uh I don't know what happened. I just, one year, I kind of went into it, like, give up on the social on like the superstitions and focus on work. And so it kind of became more like a a business thing. 
yeah, it's a just job. Like, like, yeah, it's a job. Focusing on what I'm doing work wise, you know. Right. Okay. And so yeah, it's like kind of like, like oh, me and me and one guy, Mike Connolly, we have an actual like man handshake before you know they're walking out to the ice, start the game. That's about it. I saw that guy's been there a while, eh? Long time here. Yep. Yeah, it looks like a player too, a little bugger too. I like that. Yeah, I call him the bulldog. Like he he mucks hard. He goes hard. That sounds he fun. Not, he, he doesn't mind, you know, using his body up against a guy bigger than him and getting under there. And I like that. Deese, you got anything going on these days? Uh, I got I got one guy. We we do the fist bump and then we we give each other like the hip check just as he walks out. Um, I got another guy. I bet you he's where, one of your favorites on the team. He he's super low maintenance. Great guy, Austrian guy. He's uh, he's actually really chilled out. Amadeus Egger. There you go. Shed so he, He's he's a great guy. I love Amo. Um, oh, I do a shot of moonshine too. I forgot about that one. I do. I I, I keep that running. Yeah, you do I have a, a shot. shot I have a shot of whiskey. I, I do do a little shot of moonshine. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, well, he didn't. You do whiskey with me before a game once in no, the in the container in Cardiff. I don't do whiskey. You did. I had like oh. a beer. Oh, oh, you had a beer. Me and Hendo had a whiskey, and Hendo came out, and he's obviously a, a ginger slash redhead. And Hendo came out the container glowing red from the whiskey when it hit him. Right, and then um, I came out actually painted red. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're not yeah, spray painting difference. anybody anymore. <laughs> No, nobody's. Uh, those days are gone. I think. Right, I think so too. I don't know. I've never. I. I haven't heard of anybody else getting spray painted for pregame speeches around the hockey world. I've been talking oh. to a lot of people in my shed. I've never heard of it again. Might might be a solo thing for you. Might be. Deese, you were my painter. Pigs got in the action. We created it and sometime. we all killed it. We killed it at the same time. It got a bit carried away, didn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got a bit intimate. No, it didn't. Real nothing got intimate, Deese. That's in your mind. I nothing was intimate about it. I was doing the job. I was doing the work. Like yeah. we talked about. I was know? doing the work. Move that to the left a little, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta lift you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta lift it up. I gotta get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just lift that thanks thank you thank you uh well anyways thanks for making my monday way better guys this is why it's so much gosh darn fun to do this you know and we should have an annual chat to start off the season kick off what's yep. going on right i'm sure oh, i'll yeah. be ready to talk beer tents again in another year <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we got oh, postseason we, we post with lamps too you know <laughs> Well, we still, I got to get Lamps and Uncle Jerry in here. Um, yeah. There's so many options of what to do. Um, Anybody that hasn't listened to the Jerry Coon episode should go listen. That was a great one, by the way. Yes. And we've had great, great uh, fe- we've had great feedback, um, I guess, like kind of globally that people appreciated him opening up. Um, he was one of the more nervous guys to come on. And um, when he did, fu- when he did come on and then we have a chat like that, and then he wants to come on again or is willing to. And then it's yep. like, this is cool. And um, yep. fun is fun. And um, and like he's like my buddy now. We write to each other. And it's like, I didn't even know him. He's a Bronco and a guy that goes to Germany. And we had a lot in common. But um, that's what I like about this is talking to people I have stuff in common with. Because uh, you say you want to go have dinner and stuff with people that aren't in the hockey game. I was only talking to people out of the hockey game yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I totally respect it. I respect that 100%. Yeah. And it is fun. Lives, yeah. they put their, people put their lives into it. Like, I put my life into it just as much. Like, I, I get it. It's And I can't ever imagine being away from it. Well, that's and, that's, and that's, that's what makes me want to do this, right? Was I was out yeah. of it. And now with coaching the kids and then this, it's like, man, it's a massive part of my life I mean, again. And it feels I was gonna say, you might be more into it now and following more leagues and more teams than you ever did in your life. Yeah. I got, I'm cheering for way more teams than I used to. Yeah. I didn't give a shit about anybody, but our team, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now I like a lot of teams. Um, I mean, now but, you're cheering for teams that you were rival teams, you know? It's pretty cool. It is and cool. Rival teams, and rival teams like you. That's very. It is cool. Very like very... Herring and I are friends. And um, that's one of my, I'm trying to remember what all I've scheduled here. But this week I'm having on Mac and Mosey 
Um, and I'm going to get chocolate going again in Cardiff. Like, I mean, going. And um, then we got the Twix happening in Herning because their support is awesome. And then, like, my chocolatey Manchester Storm with those two guys on, I'm having Jake on with Mac and Mosey. We're going to run a muck and we're going to talk about all the fun we've had, Chuck and Chocolate, right? Awesome. Nice. And it's the start of a new season. We got to get things carried away, right? <laughs> Boy, I got to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, because fun is fun, right? Get the Absolutely. train rolling. Everybody, have a great Monday. This has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with. Holy moly, Maxi Adiz. Get stop. I got to hit stop there.